Okay, and I left the yard, so I gotta send the email to to the broker. Just one second. Da -da -da -da. Left shipper. Okay, somebody sent me a message. Oh, that's my brother. That can wait. Alright, we'll get some snacks. And yeah, it was so helpful to have another pair of hands and eyes, you know, when uh, hooking up to this. And uh, so. I'm going to show you some major differences with when moving now after the, you know, John and Mike helped make it more narrow. Check this out. First of all, we were able to move the fifth wheel. See, that's like the maximum because he was watching and we double checked when I was turning. He was watching this so that it doesn't hit these legs. But we were able to go much further than before. And so now I can feel some weight. I can feel some weight on the front and the truck no longer seems like, seems like it's on a, a rocket launching pad, you know? So now it's, it's much better. So I have all my signs on. And I, but I still don't have the permit for for Michigan. I just checked with the. What you see, it's pretty clean over here. I made this mess. I'm sorry. I'm just full off. But it's just you know some very soft dirt, like another rain. And it'll disappear. And actually, a very bad weather is coming. There's snow in Chicago but here it's still okay and the lights are working oh yeah so what they did very cool thing John and Mike did is uh, they uh, these chains were driving me crazy because they were kind of like bulging in here in the at the bottom and he was able to start this whole thing and tighten the chains and so he rotated them up you know I see there's no longer anything at the bottom because over here they were sticking out like this you know and of course that's not good because that makes my whole load wider and also at the top they were able to lower it you know basically these guys know what they're doing whereas the the shipper over there in Quebec you know they just gave me this thing and said go you know and so it was it was taller and wider than what the spec sheet said so now everything is tucked in we see everything is beautiful and the fifth wheel is is uh, more forward and the brakes were not very good on this thing so they they took care of that so now i feel much better okay let me find that uh, i just want to go to my uh, you see I, I need to take this 40 where's, where's the airport yeah I want to go here petrol pass it's a big place and it's just like five miles away from the border and I'll sit there wait for my permit Head southwest on Gladwish Drive, Fort Plank Road. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys some driving here in Ontario. Where we do things a bit differently than in Michigan. <laughs> well, not really, but... Ontario is kind of similar because here... You see a lot of multi-axle uh, trailers. Well, you don't we don't have that craziness like with 20 axles in a row like what they have in in uh, in uh, Michigan but most of our trailers are three axle trailers right like I mean step deck flatbed uh, heavy
dijo and we are moving so I bet that mammoth crane yard was I was real happy to see this thing go because they don't have a big yard Oh boy, I got a bunch of flags on this thing. And I saw some postings uh, online. So I hope to be able to find something. To bring back. But we'll see what happens because uh, for me it's 120 miles. I just did this morning, right? I woke up at uh, 4:45 and 5:30 I was on the freeway in Cambridge. took me just over two hours to and I was here at 745 and we agreed on 8 on the night before uh, John texted me asking what time and I said let's make it 8 and so when I came he was already there and the machine started no issues because of course but it's still cold now it's uh, uh, plus 4 Celsius which is what 35 F the road here is very bad like this part is all broken up but I need this uh, I need this highway 40 over here and we're going north towards uh, 402 towards towards Sarnia feel heavy of course but at least the truck is turning now right <laughs> before there was too much weight on the back and the truck just didn't want to turn but you see that's what it can do sometimes what that's why it's it's uh, sometimes I think that my truck should be a three axle truck with a Jeep but then you get a load like this you know you can make some money uh, if you have a four axle truck because very few people have them you know even in Ontario so to do a load like this you know power only uh, like a tow, a tow away right so you need a four axle truck like if the, I don't know how would they move this if this was Alberta like how do you do this in Alberta you know because they don't recognize pusher axle so I have no idea well actually yeah well I know in, in Alberta you would need you cannot use a Jeep so you would need a dry drive truck that's the only uh, four axle truck recognized right so it's a dry drive truck that's the only thing that can move this in, in Western Canada because it's too heavy for uh, too heavy for a tandem yeah tracking is not easy it's 
It's a very hard job. You know? So look at me. I'm working... I'm working real hard today. And this is my, my breakfast. Is uh, peanuts. And the problem with peanuts is they create lots of mess, right? And I try to find uh, uh, a bag, you know, like a plastic bag. But I have no plastic bag. Cannot afford one. Now, the update, this is uh, three hours later, 11 o'clock. I'm still on the Canadian <clears throat> I'm still on the Canadian side because we're having issues surprise with customs uh. hold on a second so I set up I set up the crossing from my end and send it to the broker. They told me it's Livingston. And then I talked to John. I said, Who's the broker for customs? And he says, uh, This guy. I said, No, that's the freight broker. <laughs> Who's dealing with customs? I said, they told me to use Livingston, but Livingston wants something in writing where it says, I guarantee payment of tariffs and duties. So basically, you need to have an account with them, right? And then the freight broker, uh, like the boss of the agent I'm dealing with, the freight, not customs, freight broker, says, I'm going to read, read it to you. So I said, who told you Livingston was the broker? Like, who has, who's paying the fees? Because sometimes it's the shipper in Quebec, or sometimes it's the consignee, right? Sometimes it's another third party. It can be the auction, where they bought this at an auction in Canada, right? So I asked him a question. I said, very simple question. Who's, why did they tell me it was Livingston? I already sent everything to them. And I said, uh, filed an entry with U.S. Customs on my end, waiting for your customs broker to complete a transaction on their end. And so the freight broker tells me, Livingston is their customs broker. Sorry, we can get the customer, the consignee, to pay the service fee. I don't think we can, we can pay it. Let us know if the consignee can call in or how they want to do it, basically. Maybe they can pay with a credit card. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I call them on the phone. Basically, emails don't work anymore when it's all like run around, right? I call this guy. Again, not the agent I've been working with, because, you know, there's like, there's a freight broker, right? the guy who makes all the money and then he has salespeople or agents or representatives working for him right kind of like real estate right there's a real estate broker and then in the office of the real estate broker there's salespeople right and but usually they don't know anything right so now I skipped my agent and now I'm talking directly to the to the top boss and I said, excuse me, I just have a simple question. How often do you guys ship stuff across the border into Canada? <laughs> because it doesn't seem like they know the difference between a customs broker and freight broker, you know, and... and Anyway, because then he tells me that... No, actually, that we're going to use the more bark, like the manufacturer of this, more bark. We're gonna use Mobark because the customer, the consignee, did not have a set up account with Livingston. And so I called him and I said, So who's the broker? Like, is it Mobark? 
He says, no, it's Livingston, but they're using Mobrox account. All right, so I think I need more coffee. But that's the story. Basically, whenever you deal with the border, and so, and he was, actually, yeah, I, 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 I read your wrong email. Uh, the freight broker asked me, yeah, he says, we're using Mobark's customs broker since the consignee didn't have one set up. We may need to bill it through them, but if we can handle it up front, we can reimburse you or have consignee call in and pay over the phone. What? <laughs> Carriers never pay for customs brokers services. It's not, you know, because I already did my thing, right? That's the thing. I go to my website, I log in, I do my entry as a carrier, and I mentioned this many times, and then you use, uh, then it's, it's a two-sided transaction, right? There's the carrier, me, but I cannot do everything myself. There must be a customs broker. And so I file my paperwork, and customs broker files their paperwork, and the way it merges on the U.S. Customs in this case, not Canada, but on U.S. Customs, the way it merges is by using the this magic uh, PAPS number. Like there's a sticker. I put a sticker uh, with my number that's assigned to me so they know it's a legitimate carrier. And so that number is the something that brings together these two entries. One done by the carrier, me, and one by the broker. If one of them is missing, you cannot cross the border. Right, and so when they say that I have to pay for the customs services, they just don't understand that it's much more complicated than that, right? So there must be an assigned customs broker, and usually the customer, or whoever, shipper, consignee, they must have an account with the said customs broker. So the customs broker, you know, checks their credit, you know, it gives them, let's say, I don't know, ten thousand dollars in credit on the account, and then they use them and then the customs broker sends them a bill let's say every month right hey you owe us you know twenty thousand dollars you owe us uh, two hundred dollars right but it's never the carrier and i said no I'm, it's not going to work that's why i called the guy on the phone i said how often do you ship stuff across the border and actually the guy says uh well we do ship it but not on a regular basis and that's what i thought John, the cheaper guy just called me, he says, uh, any news on the border and the permit? I said, well, we have the permit, but they're still working on the border. And I told him the way they route me. I, I read him, you know, the highway numbers so he knows which way I'm coming. And he says, oh, they're sending you to Mike's house. I said, what? All my paperwork has the specific address and it says Cook's Forestry Products and I said that's all I got and he said well no that's we don't want you to go there that's Mike's house uh, and then the, because I'm near the border or well, maybe he's driving over there but but the connection is pretty bad you know hello Sergey Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the carrier. How are you? I'm the, good. I'm the, I'm the broker, I believe. But um, I'm just calling to let you know on that. Uh, that yeah, basically, that was the customs broker, and he started saying, Oh, we got to advise you that we're putting this shipment on hold. Because he says, We're not sure that we are the broker. And I said, use this. Oh, uh, John just sent me an address. Okay, got it. But, but you see, that's how it works in, in trucking. For some reason, nobody thought about letting me know. <laughs> and only now, you have to resolve to some, you know, threats. 
because I, I sent a text to John. I said, John, uh, would you mind please sending me the proper address? Otherwise, I'm just going to park it in the front yard of your dad's you know, house, which is not going to make the big boss happy, right? And right away, I got an email with the correct address. Thanks, John. No, but I... <laughs> no. But I mean, it always happens because there's so many parties involved, right? Like, especially this is, you know, we're talking international trade, ladies and gentlemen. Even though this thing was made in, was built in Michigan, right? But it ended up somehow in Canada. And so now, just to do this uh, final 172 miles to the destination, we have to go through all this rigmarole, you know? But anyway, that was the broker. So the broker says, we, we need something in writing. He says, we cannot just bill somebody, right? And um, I said, okay, I gave him my email address. I said, please send me an email, right? Because then for me, it's easier to forward it, you know, to pass it over to somebody. And so uh, I know how to, you know, facilitate, uh, accelerate things. So I can just, as soon as I get the email from this broker, saying what they need, then I can uh, forward it to the manager at uh, logistics, uh, like the broker, right? And I know they, they will take care of it, because he's the boss there, they in touch with, uh, with the more bark, the manufacturer, the, um, the customer, but see, like I myself, but by myself, I cannot do it. The broker says, you know they're a customer, see? So that's why uh, carriers never uh, deal directly with with the customs broker. Okay, hold on. This is my second load. I'm, I'm booking the, another load. Hello, Sergey. So the broker says, the customs broker says, okay, I'll send you an email um, what they need from me. And I, I gave him my email address, right? And I spell it and I say, you know, there's a word ton in my email address, right? Like ton as a measure of weight. And that's what I said. Ton, T-O-N, as a measure of weight. And the guy says, yeah, 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 okay. And then he, and he disappears. No email, nothing. So I called again. I try his number. I'm out of, I'm out of the office. Leave a message. I call the main, main entrance. I mean main. <laughs> I call the main phone number and some lady comes on and then finally i see a second call coming in that guy is calling me back oh we just talked this is dave from livingston uh you gave me an email address and i send i send you what i need but it bounced back and i i already know what happened and I say, so either he missed numbers uh like there's two numbers in my email address anyway so i give him the oh i th and he says i thought you said tom as in a uh, man's name, Tom. I said, no, Ton, Tan, Tan. Anyway, one letter, one letter. <laughs> so basically, quick tip, never use your name, especially if you are from Germany, or if you are uh, Native American, or if you are from India, you know? and there's like 20 consonants and 30 vowels in your name, never use it for professional business emails. Like, my name only eight letters, right? But I was smart enough not to use my full name. So I thought I would be using this, but a lot of people are confusing Tan with Tom. You know, anyway. Gotta use a very simple, easy to spell uh, email. You know, by the way, what... Uh, uh, FBI agents use, you know, they use agent and then the number, you know, easy. And that's what I used. Uh, I came up with this. I saw a movie about this. There was a uh, some. It was a movie about FBI, and they was and they showed the, you know, the the heading of the email. And I saw I was. I'm always looking at these things, you know, like always curious how people, what kind of handles they use. And this one said agent. You know, then the badge number, and that made like total sense. You know, so it was like agent, I don't know, three zero seven four two one at, you know, FBI dot gov something like that. You know, or some government website. And that's why when I was at Landstar, I used the word truck and my truck number. 
I still remember it was uh, 412540 so that was my old email which is no longer active but I use truck and then the truck number at, at you know and actually quite a few brokers complimented, complimented me on this because it was real easy right to understand I said you know my truck number uh yeah okay I, I said well that's my email truck the word truck plus the number you know and still some were confused you know or maybe I use driver did I use driver like driver and then my truck number I don't remember but that's like the easiest way you know like I made it a bit too complicated with this so I think I need a new email address so it's 2 30 p.m. finally the uh, border crossing has been approved the route is entered with the new address which is actually uh, a bit closer just south of Harrison maybe like one exit before and I already booked another load basically just something to another power only just dr to drag back to Canada you know just to pay for fuel and stuff like that at least I'm not going empty so I've been sitting for six hours and the engine is cold so as soon as we warm up, I'll uh, start heading to the border, which is uh, nine kilometers or six miles away. And yeah, the rain has started, and they did they did promise us a very rainy week. Oh, big ship, wagon wagon board. Uh, probably German Wagenbord no Wagenbork Wagenbork uh, looks like a container ship and behind him there's a small boat and on the side it says pilot you see so these guys are using the same uh, principle like in uh, heavy haul trucking so a big ship a big ship requires a pilot or escort all right we made it to the United States of America so the cheaper wagon or now I call it cheap thank you yeah now I call this thing I used to call it cheap wagon now I have a new name cheap monster cheap monster <laughs> so it's made in Michigan somehow made it way to uh, to Quebec and now we're trying to bring it home to that cheaper guy. Well, this is uh, US 127, 127 North, approximately two hours south of uh, Mackinac Bridge. And the red dot on my tablet that's my destination that's uh, that cheapers uh, that cheaper guys uh, yard so we are five minutes away says cooks forestry products I'm so glad that the poor guys are waiting for me there you know to help me unload I just saw them standing near the main building 
All right, and we go like this, so we have to go on that road, basically. just shut down on this marathon because I have probably 40 minutes left uh, in my hours because I started driving today at 5.30 oh, and we are low on fuel beautiful <laughs> I did not fuel between Cambridge and here, and you see the price is okay, 309. All right, I think I have to go in here. Yeah. This is a bit tricky. Oh, they're letting me go, beautiful. So I got 200 liters of diesel, which is roughly what, like 70 gallons, 60 gallons, back in Cambridge. And I drove two hours to Sarnia, and after that empty, and then after that I was driving to, uh, you know, with this thing. And my gauge in, in metric showed about 59 liters per 100 kilometers. You know, like pretty, pretty hefty. Um, like pretty bad fuel mileage because this thing of course heavy and it catches a lot of wind so yeah that's the plan the plan is um, once I hook and drop this one sign my bill of lading and then just go get fuel So this is where that cheaper guy lives, or rather works. So I'm glad I found out that this is the actual delivery and not the other place where they wanted me to go, because that would be awkward to come and realize that that's a residential place. Whereas this is, you see, it's a big, big uh, property. And I asked John, I said, like, how do I find your place? Will I see lots of these cheap monsters? He says, no, they're all out working. He says, but you will see trucks and you will see some equipment. Oh, well, they even have a little lake over here for some morning uh, fishing. So there you go. I arrived. Thank you, Miss Google. You've been very helpful today. Oh, wow, look at this. I guess that's what they bring. Oh, that's what they have. They have uh, Western Star and Freightliner. So that these are their own trucks. And I think that's the... Where's John? Oh, look at this. Little stove over there. These guys are cooking with gas. <laughs> Cooks for his products. I made it. Bye-bye, cheap monster. See you later. Don't take any bad chips. <laughs>